Hey guys, this is John with 2 Minute RN from NRSNG.com. Today we're going to talk about asthma. Okay, so let's get into it real quick. Asthma is basically chronic inflammation of the airways which leads to intermittent obstruction. This can be due to allergens, uh, sinusitis, cold and dry air, medications, food additives, hormones, um, and basically allergies to different things. So what can happen is if, if the patient becomes unresponsive to treatment or if the airways become unresponsive to treatment, then this can actually lead to status asthmaticus, which is a, a, a very emergent um, situation. Okay, so let's talk really quick about assessment findings. If you have a patient who comes in complaining of, of asthma, some of the things you're going to see are you're going to see dyspnea or being very short of breath. You're going to hear wheezing on expiration. So if the patient is just wheezing when, they, when they're exhaling air, that's a good sign that it could be asthma, just a <sighs> kind of wheezing sound like that when they ex uh, expire. Um, they're going to complain of chest tightness. They're going to have tachypnea, which is breathing very fast and being short of breath. Um, they're going to have diminished breath sounds. Okay, they're going to have this airways full of mucus and uh, that they're going to have a hard time. You're going to have a hard time hearing the breath. They're going to have decreased PaO2, uh, partial pressure of oxygen, and so you may see respiratory alkalosis. Okay, what does that mean? Well, alkalosis means you're going to have your pH is going to be above 7.45. With pH above 7.45, that means our our um, O2, of course, is going to be lower, okay? So with that as well, you know, your CO2 is going to be lower, okay? To manage this, what are we going to do? We're going to give medications to manage it, okay? So some of the meds we're going to give are going to be beta agonists. Some of the beta agonists are going to be bronchodilators, um, anticholinergics, and theophylline. Theophylline is a medication that's not given very often nowadays, so we won't talk about it much, but maybe get into that a little bit later. Bronchodilators, of course, are going to expand the airways, open them up, um, and you should always give bronchodilators before other meds, okay? Why? Because as we give those bronchodilators, we're going to expand the airways, and that's going to allow things like our corticosteroids, um, our anti-inflammatories, and our O2 to actually get into there. Okay, so other things you want to do, you're going to want to identify precipitating factors. You're going to want to ask the patient where they work, if they've ever had allergies before, um, if they ever experience chest tightness when they're outside during specific seasons, etc. You're going to want to teach proper inhaler use. For example, you're going to want to teach the patient to take deep breaths to ensure that the medication gets in. They're going to want to shake the inhaler up before they take it. And they're going to want to allow, once they inhale the medication, they're going to want to hold their breath for as long as they can, about 10 seconds, to get that medication to distribute throughout the lungs. They're going to teach the patient about peak flow meter. This is a device they can take at home and they can kind of monitor their own asthma um, reactions. So peak flow meters, they're going to want to achieve about 80 to 100% of their, um, their, their peak amount. Um, and that's something they can do at home to kind of determine if they're experiencing um, exacerbations of asthma. Let's look at the, the normal bronchioles. You're going to have notice that you have a lot of uh, space here for the air to get in. What happens with asthma is this, this becomes closed in and they have less space for air to get in. And that can be due to excessive mucus. You can see swelling from allergens and things like that. This can be very intimidating and terrifying to patients because they are not able to breathe. It becomes very, very scary to them. This is just a little picture of an inhaler. Um, the, 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 a lot of med asthma medications are given, especially for kids and things, given via nebulizer. The reason for the nebulizer type things, um, this is inhaler, not necessarily a nebulizer, but giving it in this form allows it to get more into the lungs. Okay, some of the medications you're going to see um, are going to be the different bronchodilators, albuterol, um, things like that, Spiriva, um, and then you're going to see Montelukast, uh, things like that. Those are going to be the medications that you're going to see most often with these patients. All right, that's a quick overview of asthma. Uh, check out more and be sure to subscribe to get all the two-minute RN videos. Thank you.